so in this today's review session we're going to discuss about arrow modeling and data importing and then i'll go over a project which i have done last semester uh, so i will analyze these other queries in the data and uh, first we'll discuss about arrow modeling uh, so for to do that uh, you need to uh, go to this website uh, apcjones.com arrows once you go there uh, yeah this is arrow tool so uh, Let's create it from the scratch. So I'm deleting everything. So this is your blank slate. So uh, to start with uh, arrow modeling, you should have a data with you uh, to uh, foresee like what what I need to create, what graph model I need to come up with, like how it's going to look like. So you need to analyze your data first. Uh, for in my case, this is my data. It's the F1 race data. So it includes the data from 1960s to 2017. Uh, it's a very big data. It had almost 20,000 records, 20,000 plus records. So I had looked into the data. I had a few columns which I don't need. So what I did is I had to clean up our data first. So uh, to do that, you can do a similar way or you can come up with some different way as well. So I uh, I just took the three just 3,500 records, sample records. So it, it just gets the random data. It's not just uh, 1961 to some 3,500 rows, whatever the uh, year it ends up with. It's not like that. It picks a random rows and then uh, just coalesces the data and then gives it back. So this is what this data, so it, it contains uh, 3,500 records. And uh, you can even mention the columns which you want to include. And yeah, so this is my data now. So I want to create an arrow model of this. How do I need, how do I create this? So I have a uh, driver, uh, I have a Grand Prix names, uh, I have a circuit name, and then the location, and then the points. So what I need to do is that I need to think how do I need to create. So I have a driver. Driver participates in this Grand Prix. He won this Grand Prix, and then he is a part of this circuit, and then. He completed these many laps. What's the status of his current situation, current uh, place in the grant, like that, right? So, to just upon uh, looking at the data, I'm gonna start with a node now. <clears throat> First, I'm gonna create a driver node, as we discussed, and I have a driver name. Since the your arrow model is your a schema of a data, I'm gonna say the main name is a string, uh, string type of data. I'm going to say yes, create it. So the next we discussed is a Grand Prix. So I'm going to create a Grand Prix. And Grand Prix has some, and which is of a string type. OK, I have a driver data. I have a Grand Prix. So what is the relationship between this, these two nodes, right? So I'm going to create a relationship, drag, drag the edge of the node and then just connect it to a, a, another node here. It's gonna create a relationship uh, uh, for you. So what you need to do is after creating this, just double click on it, then say, so what, what driver does in a grant? He participates in that grant. So I'm gonna say party C pays in, right? Participate in this grant. So this is a relationship. And I want to create a one more node, say. So what do you need to create now? So <clears throat> go back to your data, look at the data. So what else I can create? What? How do I relate with the driver, grand prix, and all? So I can say circuit name, right? If you have a circuit name. So since driver is participating in this grand prix, he's also participates in this circuit, right? So I'm going to create that now. Circuit name. And it has a name property, which is of a string type. Yeah, I have a circuit name. now. So I'll create a connection with the circuit name. I'm going to say what I'll do, I'll maybe reverse it. Circuit is part of this country, right? So say part of this grant. And driver participate in this circuit. So 
So th this is how you go about creating your arrow model, right? So uh, this is a schema of your uh, the graph model, right? You can if 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 it is too big or if it, if you are not able to uh, see it properly, you can always choose a style here. Go to Bootstrap and click on Save. It, it, it probably it will not work for the first time. You need to do it twice. Click on the second time, you can see that it works. So you can see more clear in this way. So uh, this way you go about creating the arrow model. So uh, I'm not gonna uh, start creating all the uh, nodes here. I have already created, I'm gonna just, uh, show you guys that. I'm gonna close this and open the arrow model which I created. This was my arrow model for the last semester's project. As I told Diver, Diver is part of uh, Grand Prix and he's from this country. And he participated in this circuit. And uh, Grand Prix has these these many circuits. I mean, this circuit, and is organizing this year, and the result, and then the car rank, driver rank, and driver has these money points. And car car means the constructor, right? So constructor has these money points. So this this was my uh, arrow model. So this is how you go about creating your arrow model. So just this is just a out. Uh, or say blueprint of how do you gonna create? How are you going to create a, a graph model in your uh, Neo4j database, right? So you have all this. So what I need to do next is that uh, start a Neo4j desktop. Uh, start a Neo4j desktop, and uh, let me stop this. We'll create a new database, a new project, say demo accountants. So this is my project. So uh, I guess you, uh, everyone is familiar with uh, how to create a database. So click on a add local database, give a name for the database, password, and then say create. So, uh, it will take some time to come up. Uh, be patient with that. Once it's come up, uh, we need to do a couple of steps before we proceed uh, with loading our data, uh, CSV file or our data, or starting start executing the queries and opening in our Neo4j browser. So before you start, so the two things you need to do is that uh, first click on click on the click on the uh, database. Uh, there is one more uh, pane open on the right side. Will open on the right side. So go to plugins, uh, install Epoch. Uh, this is a library, consists of a lot of functions, uh, say two integer or some uh, default function near for your supports. You need this to execute Cypher queries. So install that. It is installed. So uh, the another step is to go, uh, an another first step is, the second step is that uh, go to configurations, click on these three dots, settings, and you'll see the settings here. You need to comment this directory import. So what this means is that uh, it expects your data to be in the import directory, which is a default directory for the Neo4j. We don't want this because we have our data in some other directory in our local laptop. So you want to mention that full file. So comment out this and then click on apply. Once that is done, just close this and then start the database. It'll, so it'll take some time to uh, come up. And then once it's up, you'll see an active badge next to this demo database. So uh, let that let that start. So I'll walk you guys through a load CSV which I have done. So this is my load CSV or a load data set uh, code. So uh, as you see this, I'm loading a CSV with headers. This is my location. And uh, I'm creating uh, these nodes and then the relationship. I'm going to copy this. So a uh, bet better way to write your load CSV script or cipher queries is to write it in a uh, editor. Uh, so right now I'm, I'm using uh, 
Visual Studio Code. You can use any other editor, Sublime, or any text editor, uh, so that it's a bit convenient to write a uh, Cypher code. So once you have written the Node CSV with headers, open your uh, database in a new Visual Browser. So once you have that, uh, just copy paste your load script here. You can see that here I'm loading my file from uh, my uh, full path here under the Neo4j project and click on execute. It will take some time to create a uh, notes because it has the different find data parts. Once that is done, you'll be able to uh, see, yeah, you can see that five, eight, six, eight labels created. And you can see that these many relationships created. You can on the left side pan, pane also you can see that these many node labels created and these are the relationship types. Right. So uh, this is this is how you load your uh, CSV into a uh, neo forge. So I I have my arrow model. I have my lo data set loaded and the uh, I'll be have my nodes created relationship created at uh, and then everything is ready. What to, what's next? What to what do you want to do next? Right? So you need to come up with few queries to analyze the data. Say uh, this is my data, right? So I have this data. What I so what I came uh, came up with the analysis is like okay, these many uh, brand breaks happened, and then these are the drivers who participated in that. So how do I know uh, that in this grand prix, how many drivers participated, how many unique drivers? What is the constructor uh, who uh, which won more most grand prix, or uh, who is the driver who won most grand prix? Right. I, this is out of uh, out of I'm just uh, thinking about it since I know the game and I'm just uh, creating the analysis on this data. We can come up with a different different analysis for a different data set for the hospital. How many patients comes in a day? So what's the uh, disease uh, common disease which patients comes in? So you, you need you need to come up with few analysis and then write a query upon that. So uh, let me show you a few queries regarding that. So these are my queries. So as you can see that this is the first query which says number of times Hamilton participated in the Grand Prix where the status of Grand Prix is finished. Why? Because if once a Grand Prix starts, some 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 drivers may just eliminate during the first lap itself. They'll not be able to finish it at all. So in few of the Grand Prix, Hamilton was not able to finish it at all because of the car problems or he got crashed. Right? I just want to see how many Grand Prix he actually completed. So I'm I'm going to open the Neo4j browser and say copy paste the code here. You can say that match status. Status is where you will see your status row here. Status right. So here you can see that the uh, see not classified or you can say just uh, finished, finished or engine problem. Or just done, done a three laps, or just withdrew from the green, right? I just want to see that. So I'm going to execute this. You can see that Bridge the Lane Grand Prix, he totally completed three. Uh, I mean, there are multiple Grand Prix happened, circuits will be there. So he was able to finish three. Uh, I mean, he was able to finish a three Grand Prix with that, right? This is, this is one kind of analysis. So we'll see another query now. So We'll see. Yeah, I have a query written already. Let's open that. Yeah, this one. So this Grand Prix. So uh, what I'm doing here is uh, I'm fetching a Grand Prix and then tell me in this Grand Prix who won the, who won that, which driver won that Grand Prix, right? So this is a. Uh, let's execute, execute that. I'm limiting it to two. Let me say ten. Okay. And I'll first I'll not return a driver. Let me just say Grand Prix. So these are the Grand Prix, right? So if I just click on that, it will just show all the participated drivers here. I don't know who won or not, right? So I'm gonna I have a, a, st a condition set here, but I'm not returning that, right? So I'm gonna return that as well. So, driver and execute 
and then it will show driver. So Hamilton won these many uh, these Hamilton won these Grand Prix, and you can say Vettel won these Grand Grand Prix. You can see, yeah, Alonso won German Grand Prix, right? So this is one kind of analysis. So I, I want to see uh, since I'm seeing so uh, so many Grand Prix associated with Hamilton, I'm much curious about Hamil uh, how many times would have uh, Hamilton won till now. So I, since I have a very limited data set now, right now I just have three thousand five hundred records. The number might be different. The total Grand Prix he won is ninety one plus, I guess. But with the limited data set, uh, say I'm gonna check how many Grand Prix he won actually in this data set. So to 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 do that, so this is my query. So say I'm matching a Grand Prix. Who participated driver participates in that you can see that the relationship is uh, towards the grand prix here and uh, where driver is driver won that i mean the driver name is uh, hamilton return driver name driver and the win count how many times uh, one right so i basically i'm just returning all the drivers not just hamilton and then just uh, ordering by the win count Okay, so I'm gonna execute this now. You can see that, yeah. See, these many, these are the drivers, and then these are the wins, uh, number of uh, wins the driver have uh, completed. You can see Hamilton won 17 times, and uh, Michael Skakmer won 12 times. You can see Vettel won six times. Right. Yeah. So uh, this is this is how you need to come up with the uh, analysis with your uh, data. Uh, so you you have uh, I can I can I'll show you my project report also. This is yeah. This is it. So this is my cipher script. <clears throat> I'm I'm mentioning my uh, load script here, and uh, I'm creating a nodes with merge here uh, because I don't want to create a duplicate nodes. I'm just gonna create a merge. Why merge? Because it's going to check first. If it's there, it's going to just associate with that node. And uh, otherwise, if it's not there, it's going to create. Right. And I'm, I'm creating the relationship as well. But before that, one more important thing is to create an indexes and constraints. You can see that I'm creating few indexes and constraints here. Uh, so uh, and the constraint. Uh, uh, in this data set, uh, I found only result ID is the only unique constraint that I can uh, come up with. So I'm just setting a constraint on a result ID, saying this is unique constraint for me. And then creating the indexes for all the uh, nodes I'm creating. Uh, so why this is helpful? This will help you help to speed up the querying the uh, nodes. So this, this is similar to MySQL uh, advantage we have indexes. <laughs>